Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review, up to date another beautiful Holby steam locomotive. Alright then, come in and sit down because this locomotive looks like an absolute beauty. You guys would have actually seen it already because I'll have edited in some clips from later on, but at this point I've only actually seen the outside of the box of this model, and I should also say a thank you to my friend Paul who told me about his and actually caused me to get this locomotive. So the loco is this, it is the Hornby T9 in the absolutely gorgeous LSWR green livery, which is so unusual, it almost looks like an LNER green, doesn't it? If I had to compare it with something and I have owned a couple of T9s in the past but my experience with them wasn't absolutely the best I mean one of them was the sort of southern black one which was very very nice looking but it didn't have any of the intricate livery detail that this one does and the other one I've got is a sort of like a BR green one slightly better livery but the insides of it sort of crumbled away because they'd used cheap materials with contamination in it and I spent most of my time with the model just trying to fix the damn thing to get it to work rather than enjoying it so this is not just a model railway review this is a story of redemption and I'm hoping this locomotive will redeem the T9 from Hornby a little bit and I hope it does because the RRP is rather a lot higher than it was when I bought my other T9s it's now £169.99 which is quite incredible actually and I bought this one for a bit of a discount from D-Rails models so thank you again D-Rails £152.99 so obviously it's an awful lot of money but thank goodness I didn't have to pay nearly £170 for this. As you can tell by the box, this is the Railway Museum edition of the T9, which means that this is supposed to depict the preserved example that the NRM owns. So that's pretty interesting. I love the box as well. What cool packaging this is. I love the sort of red stripes as well. They look really cool. So let's get this out. We'll find out what it's like. Hopefully this will be the best T9 I've ever owned and hopefully it will be worth the money. Okay, let's find out. So to be absolutely clear, this was a really, really naughty purchase for me. I've already owned a couple of T9s in the past. I know roughly what they're like, but I just thought, and this is me really scrambling to try and justify this. It's been a long time since I've looked at a T9. I really like the look of this one. So I've just gone for it, obviously to bring it to you guys. It's nothing to do with the fact that I just really wanted this. It's purely for selfless reasons. I just thought, you know, the people, the viewers, they need to know what the new T9 in LSWR Green looks like. And so I'm doing this for you guys so never let it be said that I don't think of you people anyway let me show you the end of the box this is our 3863 it is in the LSWR of course it's a T9 class 440 tender engine one of my favorite wheel configurations that and it is number 120 and it has the minimum radius of 438 millimeters and it is DCC ready I believe there's an 8 pin socket inside the tender or at least there was on the previous versions that I own we'll have to see whether this one's had an upgrade or not uh, I doubt it though most of Hornby's locos still seem to have the 8-pin socket. Anyway, let me show you the back of the box. There's a brief history of the T9, or more specifically, number 120. If you want to try and read it, um, you might have a job because there's these really annoying red stripes. So if you're prone to migraines or something, you should probably close your eyes at this point because it really is awkward to read. But yeah, if, you, if you're not affected by that, uh, obviously pause it and read it if you'd like to. And then on the far end of the box, you have the drawings that Hornby produced to help them in the design of the model. As you can see, this is dated 2011, which means that the model must be now coming up to, a, you know, roughly 10 years old. Obviously, it will have been released a little bit after the diagrams were drawn, but yeah, approximately 10 years old now. Right, let's find out what this is like then. I haven't even had the cover of the box off yet. There is one really lovely feature on these T9s, which I'm hoping is still done really, really well. If you don't know what that is, uh, you're in for a bit of a treat. Hopefully that will help to justify the insane price tag now. Anyway, are you ready? First time out of the sort of sleeve. Here we go. Oh, wow, look at that. Now, I'll tell you what, I don't know if this comes across. The loco on the box looks more like a LNER green, doesn't it? This, though, is definitely more of a southern green. It's a bit more like the BT well tank, and I don't know, perhaps the Adams radial tank in the southern green. That is really quite 
the green, isn't it? Wow, look at that. Uh, yeah, it doesn't look like the picture, which is something, but actually, I think I prefer this. It really is an extreme livery, isn't it, that? Okay, let's get this out and see what it's like. How does the weight feel? Um, it doesn't feel dreadfully heavy, to be honest with you. I suppose that's fair enough, because it's a, a smallish locomotive. Here is the operating and maintenance instructions for the T9. Let's have a look. This is quite a detailed one, isn't it? So it shows you all the lubrication points as usual, where to put the accessories and how to exchange the different couplings and such. Body removal, close coupling. Yeah, there is a close coupling option with this. DCC ready. Yes, that, that definitely looks like an eight pin decoder socket, doesn't it, in the tender there. And then on the back, yeah, the usual little bit about brake rods. It shows you where they go. And they don't appear to be fitted to the model from the factory. So if you want those, those will be in the accessories bag. It seems to vary, doesn't it, that sometimes they're fitted, sometimes they're not. Okay, come on then. I really can't wait to get a proper look at this livery without being impeded by packaging and such. I guess we should look at the detail bag first. All right. Well, there is one big thing inside here. That's a spare traction tire right there, and there's another one elsewhere in the bag. Yeah, this loco does use traction tires. Would be nice to have the choice, actually, to fit a, a non-traction tired set, uh, like we have with the new Backman locos and such. But no, unfortunately, you are stuck with the traction tires on these, uh, unless you want to do some serious modifications. I've done a video on something similar before. Check it out if you like. We've got the brake rigging, as shown by the instructions, the NEM couplings, various other details. Looks like you've got some screw link couplings inside there, which isn't nice inclusion not all models have those so that's quite nice okay are you ready then is, any, is anyone else excited about this i just feel really excited which is odd because like i say i've owned t9s before okay 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 are you ready then this is going to be like a, a big reveal oh wow look at that god that livery that is it's it, i mean I, I know some people aren't going to like this i know it's a bit toothpasty isn't it but i just can't help but really enjoy this uh, I don't know how realistic this looks. Does the real T9 have quite this toothpaste-y a finish? I don't know. But uh, yeah, just let me enjoy this one. Uh, and also let me know down in the comments if you've got any particular grievance with this livery. But for what it is, I like it. Right, I'm trying to carefully pull this out. Now let's have a close look, shall we? Here it comes. Ah, oh, wow. Look at the state of that. Oh, that is just amazing, isn't it? Absolutely astonishing. And yes, the incredible feature is the die-cast boiler. This loco does indeed have a die-cast boiler, which is absolutely fantastic. And this is the kind of thing that helps to justify these insane price tags. As soon as you learn that there's actual metal and not just cheap plastic on a model, the higher prices seem to make a little bit more sense. Now, it is only the boiler that's made of metal. The running plate is plastic, so is the smoke box and such. I suppose that's to make sure that the weight is actually focused over the driving wheels and not over the front bogey or anything. So I think that is fair enough. Underneath, one thing I really like is the permanent sort of drawbar connection between loco and tender. The previous T9s I've owned just had a sort of peg on the tender for that drawbar to hook around, and it was very easy to uncouple the two by accident, which would leave you at the mercy of the wires. It would just be the wires holding the loco and tender together at that point which, to say the least, was uh, quite a precarious situation. So, yes, I'm glad that we're away from that now. Okay, wow, that is just stunning. So we will take a closer look at this in just a second. But first of all, here is a potted history on the beautiful T9s. So the T9, also known as the Greyhounds because of their high speed at the time, of course. I mean, the top speed's not particularly impressive to us now, but it was at the time. And they originated on the LSWR when they were designed by Dougal Drummond in 1899. They were intended for express passenger work and 66 were built over about three years. And they did feature several improvements over Drummond's previous 440 design, which is the C8, if you want to look that up. They included larger boilers, larger fireboxes, and they now had Stevenson link valve gear as well, but obviously that's hidden away between the frames. The locomotives served for many years and they were incorporated into the Southern Railway in the grouping of 1923, where they continued in service until the beginning of their withdrawal. Over the years, the class was modified and improved slightly, one example being the addition of superheaters in 1922, I think Yuri did that, and some of the class received quite a big overhaul during World War II and those were painted into wartime black as well. Withdrawal eventually took place after over 50 years service between 1951 and 1963 and only one was preserved and of course that's number 120 at the National Railway Museum and obviously the others were sadly scrapped. 
So there it is then, the lovely Humvee T9 up close and personal for you. And on a personal level, I think I am sold on this. Yes, I'm going to go out and say I really, really enjoy this one. However, obviously, as a reviewer, I've got to try and be a little bit objective. And so with the objectivity hat on, I've got to say the livery definitely isn't right, is it? Here is a picture of this very product on Hornby.com. You can see the two liveries are not even close. Now, they're very lucky because in the case of the A2 slash 2, the livery looked very washed out and it didn't match the product images. And I thought it looked really, really bad. The difference is with this one, I actually really like the way this looks. So it's not something that I personally have a big quibble about. However, again, from an objective standpoint, this does not look like the product that was offered and therefore some people aren't going to like it. And it is quite a bold livery, so I can definitely see people not enjoying this as much as I do. So bear that in mind. The model isn't perfect for the price. I mean, £150, it's quite a lot of money for this. Despite that die-cast boiler, the Loco is pretty light. It comes in at just 209 grams, which is even lighter than the J15 and the 700 class, the Drummond 700 class. So yeah, it really isn't a particularly heavy one. I don't really know what they could have done about that. Maybe they could have made the running plate die-cast as well, but then you'd have quite a lot of weight at the front and not so much at the back. Same thing goes with the smoke box, really. I don't think making the smoke box out of metal would have helped this. Yeah, I don't really know what they could have done about that, but the fact is it is quite light. The Hornby Glue Monster has also been back, not to a great extent, but you can see the right hand window here inside the cab is completely messed up, that is ruined with glue. And there's a little dribble on the boiler as well coming down from some of the pipe work, which was noticeable. It's not really very major at all, those are the only issues I can see, but the glue marks are a pet hate of mine to be honest. It's how a model would look if I put it together, and that's why I don't put models together that's why I buy ready to run so when you buy a ready to run and still have the glue marks yeah it just really cheeses me off that does but those really are the only major issues the model itself I'm really really quite pleased with if you overlook the livery just be very clear on that fact the livery doesn't look right so do obviously bear that in mind before you purchase it the positive side on the livery though is the quality with which it is applied. So I can show you, I mean, I don't have to worry about going in extremely close on the banding because it just it's so incredibly precise, much more so than on more recent releases. The A2 slash 2 was nowhere near as precise as this. It's really, really nicely done. And it's quite intricate as well. Look just behind the smoke box here, you can see there's a little sort of gold band around the boiler as well, which just breaks up the livery a little bit, makes it look really impressive. And like the M7 really, there's quite a lot of lining. The splashes are all beautifully lined. The side of the cab, quite an odd shape, isn't it? The side of the cab, and yet the lining is still 100% accurate. You've got the nice little running number applied to the cab. Yep, that looks fine, doesn't it? The wheels are interesting. Look at that, <laughs> toothpaste wheels. I really, really would like to know how people react to this colour. Do you like this or do you not? I, I really do think this is going to divide people. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll make a poll so that you can let me know. Okay, so the buffer beams, let's start from the front and work our way back. Very nicely detailed buffer beams, lots of riveting going on with those. You've got separately fitted, very fine metal buffers, which are sprung, let me show you that, yeah, nice sprung buffers, I always like to show that. Separately fitted lamp brackets on the running plate, which are nice and cleanly fitted. There's no wonkiness, no glue visible. That's really, really decent. The same thing is true of the smoke box door. There's quite a lot of separately fitted detailing going on there, and yet it's all presented really, really nicely. And look how fine that smoke box dart is as well. Very, very fine indeed. The boiler is complete with lots of fine handrails, which are all fitted to the model very, very nicely. On top of the boiler, the safety valves here are made of metal. They're nice and straight and they're fitted in properly. Previous T9s I've had, those were a little bit loose and a little bit wonky. On this example, they are not. You've got the pipework just above the firebox here. Look at this, this is all really neat and tidy. It's actually more complex. They're using two colors on this model. The previous ones were just painted into the copper color. It is all plastic and it does show and the whistle in the center there is obviously just plastic as well. They do look better when they're made of metal, but we're used to that, aren't we? It's always that way, really. And you've got this pipe, this very large, fragile-looking pipe, which stretches across most of the boiler, actually. Again, that is made of plastic, and it is unsupported, so be very, very careful. However, I must say, in the past, when I've had new T9s, I've felt that they were really, really fragile, and I've been frightened handling them. This one seems to be built to a much higher quality than the other T9s I've received. I don't know whether that's just because I'm used to them now and I know where to hold them and where not to hold them, but as far as I'm concerned, the quality seems really, really good on these. 
Underneath the boiler, you've got some very nice realistic daylight going on, so that looks great. And you've also got a representation of the valve gear as well. It's unpainted on this particular example, but that must be prototypical because on the Southern Black version, those were painted, so that is fair enough. Okay, the cab detail. The cab detail is absolutely exquisite. Look at this. This is definitely one of Hornby's greatest ever cab interiors. Look at the number of separately fitted parts to begin with. So many of those components are separately fitted. You've got the painted gauges so that you can see the numbers and the hands on the dials. The water gauges are separately fitted and made of sort of transparent plastic instead of the usual sort of opaque painted plastic. I mean, even Hornby's latest locomotives haven't had cabs like this. I'm absolutely amazed by that. And this is a classic example of getting exactly what you paid for. The tender four plate is a little bit less impressive. I mean, it is separately fitted and made of metal, but it doesn't appear to be pivoted. I mean, I'm putting a bit of pressure on it there and it's not moving. You know, it's gonna snap off if I push it much harder than that. So it appears it is kind of stuck in that slightly unrealistic position, which is a pity, but I guess uh, it is what it is, isn't it? Okay, so the locomotive is superb. It really is put together very, very nicely indeed. And it's a much, much better quality model than the previous T9s that I've owned, which is reassuring. I suppose, isn't it, given the price? Let's take a look at the tender then, and this is a super unusual looking tender, isn't it? I think it's because all the bearings and such are on the center of the axles rather than on the outsides, which means that you've got the exposed wheels, of course, which just is completely unlike any other tender I've owned, at least on a British prototype. So that is one feature of the T9 tender that has always fascinated me. The decoration is pretty much the same as on the locomotive. I love the sort of green, white and black motif that's going on. It looks fantastic. The lettering, the LSWR lettering on the side looks perfectly okay. Yep, that is really nicely applied. You've got a nice separately fitted coal load in the tender. And if you remove it, the inside of the tender remains realistic. Let me just show you that. So you could take out the coal and the tender is realistic all the way down to the little opening where the fireman would shovel the coal. That's a cool little touch. I've always liked that. And you've got the separately fitted brake wheel. Presumably that's a brake wheel, which is painted red as well. That looks really good. Around the back, more separately fitted lamp irons. You've got the separately painted vacuum pipe, more of those sprung buffers. And the final nice touch is that no coupling is fitted to the model straight out of the box. Now that is inconvenient. I will have to fit one myself, which is something I wouldn't usually have to do. But it does mean that as the T9 comes out of the box, it looks perfectly realistic. It hasn't got the unrealistic, horrible looking tension locks. So this is a lot more convincing straight out of the box, isn't it? Just a little thought to finish with there. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the mechanism. I will show you the ins and outs of this particular design, then we'll get it down onto the track for its first ever test. All right, excited, let's see if it runs okay. So there is the beautiful Greyhound down onto the track, ready for its first ever test. I'm really looking forward to seeing this one run. So on balance, the mechanism is really, really good overall, I would say. The first really impressive feature is that this model has all wheel pickup. So the loco driving wheels have pickups going to them. The front bogey wheels even have pickups. That is amazing. They're a little bit messy, those. You can see one or two of them from the outside of the model. In fact, if you look at the long shot, you might just be able to see one poking through there. And the tender wheels also have pickups as well. You can't see them, they, the pickups touch the top part of the tender wheels. I think that's just due to the design of the tender. Um, so you can't see them, but they are there. I do know from experience. The Loco, unfortunately, does have two traction tyres on the front two driving wheels. It is a pity about that, and I'm not keen on traction tyres. However, I do understand that it would have been hard to make this model heavier, and the alternative would be to have a locomotive that isn't all that powerful, because, like I say, it's quite light at 209 grams. I would love to have seen an alternative set of wheels without the traction tyres, because I know for a fact that some people would rather sacrifice that pulling power and just have a loco with all-metal wheels, but... I suppose that is fair enough. The Loco does have proper turned metal bearings on the wheel set, but I won't show them to you because they're quite difficult to access. It requires quite a lot of disassembly. I did remove the body though. There's the chassis. It's quite a neat and tidy chassis, not too much going on there. There is a five pole motor there. That is a five pole skew wound motor, very good quality but there is no flywheel fitted to it, which again is a little bit of a pity at the price point. I mean, really we want every feature we can get, but hopefully if that motor is a good quality one, the performance shouldn't suffer too much as a result. The gauging, quite interestingly, was a little bit loose or whatever the opposite of tight is. I measured 14.3. I had a, a job to get sort of reliable measurements, but I've settled on 14.3 millimeters, which is 0.1 millimeter below the standard. It's not a big deal, but you will notice that there's a little bit of lateral sloppy 
movement on the loco which is weird but i guess it will allow the loco to handle curves the front to back gauge was okay though that's enough about the mechanism in theory though because I know you're dying to see how this thing runs and I am as well. I've got a fairly good idea how my other T9s run but as for a brand new one produced right this year or perhaps last year in 2020, I've no idea. So let's find out. Let's go forwards and let's ease the power up a little bit, see what the crawl is like. This has not yet been running so it might not be at its best right now but straight out of the box this is what you can expect. Are you ready? Turning it up still. Oh, 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 slight movement, go up a little bit more, well, <laughs> it's not smooth right now, but it is certainly slow, I suppose that isn't too bad, is it? There is a little bit of cogging there, but at least it's five pole cogging and not three, so actually, to say that's not been running, I'm going to go out and say that is reasonable, and it's not going to cut out, you just know it's not going to stall, because all wheel pickup, that's unbelievable. That's not bad. I can see the front bogey wheels are having a bit of trouble turning. I did notice that the, well, I thought the pickups looked a bit wrong on that front uh, axle. Wait for them to come back into shot. Yeah, it's trying to turn. Oh, what's going on there? <laughs> That's weird. What on earth happened there? It's got traction tyres, so it shouldn't be slipping. That's odd. Is something taking the weight off the wheels? No, everything seems all right. I've, I'm lucky because I've got other T9s that I can test, but that's weird. I wonder what happens if I lift up some of these dry, these non-driven wheels. All right, so they are coming up off the track without lifting the drivers. What about this one? No. A tiny little lift on those, and you can see the drivers lifting off, which could suggest then that the front bogey is taking too much of the weight. Let's try it again, though. Maybe I just had it on the track wrong, maybe? Hmm, maybe it's not doing it now. The uh, the front bogey wheel is still slipping, so I think I'll just adjust the pickups and hopefully that will fix the problem. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be slipping now. Maybe it was just on the track wrong. I'm not sure. But yeah, I mean, the performance seems really, really good, doesn't it? That's really nice and smooth. And the crawl's not bad to say it's not been run in. I think if that improves very slightly, after running in, I might be able to give this five star on performance then, assuming it works properly and we don't see any more of that slipping issue. Yes, that's all right, isn't it, that? Let's try it at 50% speed. Let's see what the gearing's like. Yeah, that's really nice and not slow, but it's sensible, isn't it? Not too fast. Uh, it's not been run in, so I shouldn't really give it full speed, but it's certainly got the speed there if you want it. Look at that. There we go. So yeah, it makes good use of the full spectrum of speed offered by the controller, so that's pretty decent. Yeah, that's really nice and smooth. Lack of flywheel not causing too many issues. I will fix that front bogey before I run it in. But overall, that's, that's all right. That's okay. Right, let's do it. Yeah, that looks really, really beautiful running along, doesn't it? It might just be because the motor hasn't run in, but I have noticed that it's running quite a bit slower than my other T9s. The motor looked a bit different to the other T9's motor as well though, so maybe they're using a slightly different one, maybe it spins a little bit more slowly. But either way, the spectrum of speed and the control at the low end is absolutely fine. It's really, really good, so no complaints whatsoever. And I actually prefer it when my locos run a little bit more slowly at 50%, because it means more of the power from the controller can be put into sort of torque and control as opposed to just raw speed. So I, I do like that, I think that's a good way for manufacturers to go and this one is really really running beautifully so hopefully it will run without any hiccups or anything i'll come back to you in just a second or two after it's been running and we'll carry on with the testing okay folks there we have it running in has concluded successfully and as expected this thing performed absolutely as it should so no slowing down on curves or anything like that certainly no cutting out not even on the express points because of all the pickups yet the performance was absolutely fantastic due to the traction tires the pulling power isn't too bad either 0.32 newtons which translates to about 21 coaches on straight and level track yeah i think for a loco of this size and weight that is a pretty good pulling power let's take a look and and see what the slow speed is like now the loco has run in. It is parked on an express point here. Now I don't think I got that too slow that time. 
But even so, that looks great, doesn't it? It's really nice and smooth. Try and do a bit slower in reverse, maybe. Yeah, perhaps there's a little bit of cogging there, but to be honest, it's so slow, you wouldn't believe it, would you? Let's give it a little bit more. At that speed, it's really nice and smooth. You can actually hear the tender. I don't know if it's the coal in the tender. Can you hear it? <laughs> it's like uh, resonating slightly at that speed. Again, that'll be because of the cogging and the lack of flywheel. Uh, if it had a flywheel, that would be smoothened out. Yeah, you can really hear that. That's funny. Can you hear it? That is literally just the tender. <laughs> <laughs> but to the eye, it looks perfectly smooth, doesn't it? And I reckon it could do this all day. And it's parked on the, it's doing this on the express point as well. That's incredible. And of course, it's perfectly, it's perfectly smooth at the higher speeds. It doesn't appear to be sticking at any point in the rotation. Yeah, it's really, really a good performer. So it's not ridiculously expensive, but at least in most areas, it seems you do actually get what you pay for. And that's something I don't like to admit. <laughs> But today I will admit it because it's quite clearly true, isn't it? So that's pretty good. Right, so to test that pulling power, I don't want to overstress the Loco too much. So I have just set up five coaches, as you can see, quite a mixture of different Southern coaches. Let's go and get her coupled and have a look at her with some coaches, shall we? I'm really looking forward to this. Here we go. Let's see if the coupling is okay. I should say this is not the coupling that came in the detail bag. I thought rather than opening the detail bag and fitting, the coupling supplied, I would just put one of my own in, uh, one that I've got lying around, save me having to open it. So if it didn't couple, which it did, uh, that's not the coupling's fault, but no, that did actually couple perfectly well, so that's fine. Okay, are you ready then? Are you ready? Let's see, this little tiny 440 handle a reasonably moderate sized train. Here we go. Oh, yes, there it goes. Seems to be handling them well, but we'll follow her to Gordon's Hill in a second and see how she handles them there. And then on the inside, sorry, on the middle line, we have another T9. This is my Southern Black T9, which is still very, very smart. And I suppose it's a little bit more realistic, isn't it? <laughs> the toothpaste LSWR green. But I have to say, I do prefer the LSWR green to this version. Very nice, don't get me wrong, nothing wrong with it at all. But uh, yeah, I think I've been won over, to be perfectly honest. But there it goes, it's got some southern coaches as well, some nice, I think they're mantle coaches? Yeah, I think so, it's more of a mantle shade anyway. And then on the inside line I have yet another T9. This one really is in more of a southern green. I don't know if I've called the LSWR green southern at all today. Uh, might have done as a slip of the tongue. This is more of a southern green. It is actually a transitional livery. It does say British Railways on the tender, although obviously the livery is still quite clearly southern. And that's got some southern coaches as well. The theme in the sidings is 440s. Today's challenge is which member of the big four is not represented in the locos in the sidings. Comment below if you figure it out. Here we go then. Oh, it is a beauty, isn't it? I wish I had some coaches that kind of matched it better. What colour would LSWR coaches have been? Would they have been like the Southern coaches? That's an interesting question. I've never thought about that before. But it looks alright with these, I suppose, doesn't it? Yeah, not too bad at all. And handling them very, very nicely. So, I mean, it's a conundrum, this one, because I've never spent this kind of money on a T9 before. The others I have in my collection were much, much cheaper, so it did feel very strange to be spending such an insane amount of money on a T9. That being said, though, you do seem to get what you pay for, don't you? I mean, the delivery is so spot on. The level of detail is amazing. The performance cannot be faltered, really, can it? This is a really, really nice performer. So even though I wish the price was more like it used to be, obviously, I think there are still much worse value models out there. And I would rather pay a little bit more and have them put together properly like this one was and just have it work and do what it's supposed to do without the headache and without all the worry then spend a little bit less and, you know, have all the, the problems that you do sometimes have with certain locomotives. So it's, um, yeah, I'm a bit undecided as to exactly where I stand on this, but I guess I don't really have to make a decision. I've just presented you guys with the facts and you guys can make up your own minds. But yeah, overall, I will admit, you do overall get what you pay for with this T9.
let's have some ratings then for the latest Hornby Class T9. So as you can see, yeah, the ratings here look pretty decent. The level of detail are given four and a half stars because overall the level of detail was absolutely superb. Tons of separately fitted parts, the livery, well, well, it's a bit questionable whether that's accurate or not. It was at least really, really nicely applied. The cab detail was superb. You've got other lovely features such as sprung buffers, etc., etc. I have knocked off just half a star because the livery just really doesn't look like it did in the pictures. However, because of that die-cast boiler, the, the finish of the locomotive itself isn't too bad. It's not too plasticky. It looks reasonably realistic, so it kind of gets the benefit of the doubt there. Although, bear in mind, my opinion is playing a bit of a part there. I think if I demonstrated that the livery was inaccurate and it didn't look good, as was the case with the A2-2, I might have been tempted to knock off a whole star there. But because I think it actually looks all right, I've not been as harsh, but just bear that in mind. The performance, though, I've had to give it five star. It is noticeably a little bit slower than the older T9s I've got, but I think that's a good thing. It's really, really controllable. The slow speed is fantastic. It's reasonably smooth, not too much evidence of cogging, despite the lack of flywheel and it's really smooth and consistent all the way around the layout. Can't really fault the performance. The pulling power then is pretty decent because of those traction tyres. Tractive effort of 0.32 newtons. That translates to 21 coaches on straight and level track, and that's more than the Hornby B12, so the pulling power is not a problem at all. The mechanism, I've had to be a little bit harsh here and give it three and a half star. The mechanism overall is really good, so I love the all-wheel pickup, that's great. The proper turn metal bearings on each driving axle, that's great as well. Five pole motor no problem with that it loses one mark because of the lack of flywheel i just think flywheel locos run so much better and it loses another half mark for the presence of traction tires now usually that would be a, a whole mark for the traction tires but i think because they haven't just been really cheap and made the loco itself really light and plasticky and because they have actually put the effort in and you know produced that die cast boiler I think I will cut them a bit of slack there because the traction tyres do kind of seem necessary. Pity though that we didn't have the option to change them as I keep saying. The quality then, 4 star, overall the quality is really really good. I love the die cast boiler, that is fantastic. More of the same would be great to see. Quite a few of the details were made of metal which is great, the safety valves for example. Quite a few of them were still plastic though, a lot of that pipe work, the whistle and such. A lot of that is quite plasticky looking and it's also rather fragile. I would have preferred some of that to be made of metal. And I think the loss of one star there is cemented by the couple of glue marks I spotted. So I do feel justified in giving this four star on quality. But overall, it's really, really nicely put together. The livery was top notch and the build quality feels a lot better than on my previous T9s, which is great to see. Value for money then, this is the tricky part, £169.99 is the RRP. Oof. And then uh, D-Rails models, thank you D-Rails, I bought this for £152.99. Now on the plus side, this is really, really nicely put together, the level of detail is fantastic, I love the build quality, so in a sense you do actually get what you pay for. On the other hand though, it's a little bit light on features, I mean it doesn't have any of the pre-fitted speaker or the firebox flicker, lack of flywheel for example, the traction tyre situation isn't great. I just think nice as it is, this is a small light locomotive and £170 or even £150 or more just seems a little bit too much for this. So while you do get what you pay for, I just wish it was a little bit less expensive. So I have given it three star there. I paid much, much less. And when we're talking more than 50 pounds less for my other T9s, and even though they weren't so great on quality, they are still largely the same thing. So overall though, that's a good score. That's 8.25 out of 10. I think that should get us into the top five. Yes, it does. Yep, it is fourth, I think. Yep, there it is above the M7 and below the Backman 94XX. Yep, really, really pleased with this. They are great models. If you want to check them out, I will try and get an affiliate link down in the description for you. The Hornby T9, very, very decent little models. Well, folks, thank you very, very much for joining me for yet another review. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, it's a really, really good loco, isn't it, this one? Yeah, and overall, I am glad I decided to pick this one up. I think it was a good choice overall. Anyway, you guys let me know what you thought about the T9. Have you got a T9 in your collection? What are they like? What are your thoughts on them? Did you pick up this particular version? What did you think? Did you like the livery? Is it what you were expecting? Do, of course, let me know all of this down in the comments. For now, though, once again, thank you for your company. Thank you for your support. And I will see you very, very soon for some more videos. All right. Cheers, everybody. See you on the next one.